Just when we thought that companies were slowing down before the Christmas break, Google just shot a bazooka with its new Gemini AI tool. And if you haven't seen it already and you're wondering what it is, just watch this. I see you're drawing a guitar. You've added an amp. Now it's an electric guitar. We can make some seriously loud music now. Isn't that insane? Everyone's wondering the same thing. Is it better than ChatGPT? Also, what the hell is it? And is it different from ChatGPT? What are some ways in which it can save you time and money? I've been doing a ton of research and looking at YouTube videos and everyone talks about it being multidiscipline and multimodal and all of this jargon, but nobody really explains what the hell it really is. And they're all quite boring. So I'm going to ask this guy who always has a simple, easy to understand explanation and also makes quite a few bad jokes in under five minutes. Join in the conversation in the comments. Bro, what is this Google Gemini everyone's talking about? Is it better than ChatGPT? Will something finally bring ChatGPT down and Google's market cap back up? Oh, good question. I know the answer, but for it to make sense, we need to first understand what Gemini really is. And here's the graph that will make it all easy to understand. You're kidding, right? <laughs> yes, yes, I am. Let's get serious in simple terms. What really is Gemini? The best way to understand it is an update to the earlier large language model that they called Palm 2 or the one before that which was called Lambda. So does that mean I have to use Gemini now? No, it makes no difference what you use. You'll still use BARD. Gemini is basically a better AI engine that powers the same front-end tool which is BARD which all of us consumers use. Just like GPT-4 was an upgrade to GPT-3 but both of them power ChatGPT which is the tool that you use. Oh cool, so can I try it? Yes, it's free and already launched for the millions of viewers watching. If you haven't tried it, go to bard.google.com. Thanks, bro, but also millions of viewers. Ouch. Okay, fine. Thousands, but hopefully my hard work will pay off. And if people like what they see, they'll subscribe and like the video and it'll someday reach more and more people. Okay, got it. So why is Gemini better than the earlier one? Lambda was the first large language model that Google created which basically was able to hold an actual conversation, which understood what you were saying when you are naturally conversing and could intelligently respond. The reason this is generative is that conversations are not algorithms. They never take the same path twice. And hence, a good AI large language model needs to be able to take a path that's unique, just like a human being would. Insane, and this seems so advanced. What can really improve on this Lambda? What was the update that they released just earlier this year? That one was called Palm 2, which added new functionality like working offline on your mobile device with the limited computing power that it has. They also added the ability to do complex mathematics and also to be able to do common reasoning and derivative logic. So basically, it took the ability to have a conversation from Lambda and added the ability to do maths, logic and reasoning with lesser computing power with Palm 2. Yes, in a way, it also added the ability to do all of this in more than 100 languages. For example, let's say you're writing code sitting in the US, but your colleague is in South Korea. So you could ask Gemini to suggest a fix to the code in Korean and it can do that. Okay, wow. So why do they need Gemini at all? What's so special about that then? Now Gemini takes this to a whole new dimension. For starters, it's multimodal, which means that it can work with text, with image, with video and speech all together. Check out this insane demo that really brings it to life. Here we go. Tell me what you see. I see you placing a piece of paper on the table. I see a squiggly line. What about now? The contour lines are smooth and flowing, with no sharp angles or jagged edges. It looks like a bird to me. Hmm, what if I add this? The bird is swimming in the water. It has a long neck and beak. It is a duck. Yes! A duck is a type of waterfowl in the family Anatidae. Ducks are closely related to geese and swans. The duck appears to be blue. This is not a common color for ducks. However, there are some breeds of blue ducks. These are typically not as common as other duck breeds. It is more common for ducks to be brown, black or white. Are you sure? What the quack? I was just talking about a blue duck, and now you're holding one. It looks like blue ducks are more common than I thought. Would this float? I'm not sure what material it's made of, but it looks like it might be rubber or plastic. What if I tell you it's making a squeaking sound? Oh, if it's squeaking, it's definitely going to float. Hmm, nice. It is a rubber duck. 
Wow, can chat GPT also do this? Yes, the latest version of GPT, which is GPT-4, is multimodal, though they don't advertise it as much as Google. Okay, so that's it. Just multimodality? Bro, hold on. There's so much more cool stuff. But before I do that, you know you can ask me any questions in the comment section, right? And tell me what you thought of this video. What comment section? is just us having a conversation, right? It's not like anyone's watching us. Okay, I want what you're on. Here's the next cool feature. It's taking the generative and generative AI to the next level. What do you mean? Look at this. You can just show it an image and ask it to come up with a game idea. Okay, based on what you see, come up with a game idea. Oh, and use emojis, please. How about this? We can play a game called Guess the Country. Sure, let's do it. Clue one. This country is the home of the kangaroo, the koala, and the Great Barrier Reef. Oh, that's easy. <laughs> that's fun. Yes, that's the fun one. But now here's the one that really blew my mind and it uses its true multimodal capabilities. You are trying to get me to find the paper ball under the cup. I accept the challenge. The cup to the left. Nice. Wow, so no prompt needed. This guy just shows it cups and says nothing and it guesses what the person is trying to do? Actually, there is a prompt. It's visual. It's what makes this version of Gemini AI so human. This is what you would do. Can you imagine an AI that can just watch you and guess your intent without you speaking to it or giving it a separate text input? There's no separation between you and them. It's exactly like you would be with a human being. Now, there's no end to what will blow your mind, but here's one more, one last one. Watch this. What movie are they acting out here? I think they are acting out the famous bullet time scene from The Matrix. Ooh, nice. What the? My thoughts exactly. It can not only take video input, but just like the human brain search its library of video to get the similarities and then find the Matrix cult reference. Okay, but how does this all become actually useful? What can I practically do with all of this stuff? There's so many examples. Let's start with this one. I solve these problems, but this is the amazing part. It can read the answers and understand what was right and what was wrong and explain the concepts that need more clarification. So Gemini identify some mistakes with problems one and three here. So basically my kid doesn't need a teacher or a coach anymore. Gemini can just read their handwritten answers, correct? It can even go deeper into the ones that are wrong and tell you exactly what's wrong and why. Here Gemini identifies that the formula was correct, but there was a mistake in calculating height. We can ask Gemini to explain in more details why the height is 50 meters instead of 6. I can ask Gemini to explain further. Now, I do want to call out that Google just admitted that these videos above are a bit more deceptive than you would think. The conversations with Gemini weren't that seamless. It was someone feeding Gemini the pictures and some text input to help at times and then waiting for a response, which they then edited and made it seem as if it was in real time. Whilst this is definitely a little deceptive and sad, the base tech is still very cool. I agree. But you still haven't answered the original question. Is it better than ChatGPT? If you want a technical answer, then Google says that one of the modules of Gemini called Ultra, which will be released next year, is more powerful than ChatGPT. And there's a lot of debate on the internet about whether they're playing fair in this comparison to ChatGPT because they seem to have used some other tests than what's standard to do the comparison. But if you ask me, none of that matters. The main thing is that it's good tech and there's so much competition between Google and OpenAI, which is only good for consumers and will lead to better innovation fast. What else do you want to know about Gemini? And also, do you know about the free AI tool that you already have in your Windows laptop called Copilot? I can tell you all about it in the next three minutes right here.